How's everybody doing out there? Reggie Redfern here to BreakthroughConscious.com Coming to y'all with another video. First of all, you may have to disregard the um, hollering infant in the background. That is just my, my precious newborn Skylar, okay? Today, what I want to talk with you about is something that I've written a blog about once before um, but I never did a video. So we're going to do a video now and it's in relation to why you may not want to invest in your 401k. Or, or at least why you may not want to put all of your uh, retirement eggs in that 401k basket. All right. Um, first and foremost, you have to understand that the whole 401k plan is something that is set up by the financial services industry. These are not uh, uh, people or entities who have, you know, your retirement interest at, at hand. They, they, that's not their number one goal is how well you retire or how much money you retire with. Their goal is to earn money, to turn a profit, okay? And unfortunately, because there is a lack of financial education in our school systems today, most people don't understand good financial advice from bad financial advice. Um, I'm not a financial advisor, so that's my little disclaimer. Unfortunately, the only people who get that tag of financial advisor in this world, mainly are the people who are trying to take your money. Um, most people don't know a good financial advisor from a bad financial advisor, okay? Financial advisors are largely salesmen. They're employees. They work for a, a financial services firm. Uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, Wells Fargo, A.G. Edwards, you know, uh, Charles Schwab. So they work for a firm. They went and got a job. They don't earn or, or support their lifestyle off of profits from their trades. They earn a check just like you do. They may get commissions. So when the, the, the they have their board meeting or their team meeting and, and, and the executives or the bigwigs come in and say, listen, this is our new uh, powerhouse investment vehicle. It's an asset that, you know, an asset vehicle that we want to push, sell this to your clients. The, 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 the financial advisor who you signing up to don't dig through that vehicle to find out if it's really in your best interest. His firm told him to sell and rep and hype that particular vehicle. That's what he does. And then he, you end up with a guy telling you all the benefits that can come your way if you, you know, invest in this vehicle. It's as simple as that. And you trust him. You trust him because he wears a nice suit. He has a business card. He has a, a very household name bank behind him. And so you trust that he's telling you, that, well, you trust that he has your best interests at heart. Okay. Um, we leave school or go to school and get trained to, uh, uh, you know, go to school, get good grades, hopefully go to college, come out of college, get a good paying job, work hard, pay your taxes, buy a house, live the American dream. And if there's anything left over, you turn it over to a financial advisor to invest on your behalf for, you know, later on in your life. And then of course, in retirement, uh, a financial advisor, like let's say, oh, Bernie Madoff, since most of you guys know that name, I'm going to come to you soon, very soon. I can't wait to do uh, a blog and a video about the, 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 the collection of financial predators uh, recently. This is fairly recent. I mean, I'm probably talking turn of the century up. So in the last 10 to 13 years, how many financial predators have run these Ponzi schemes, scams, whatever you want to call it, in the financial world? Actually, for real, for real, y'all, at this point in time, it, ball, it blows my mind that Americans still turn over their retirement money to these to Wall Street. Personally, I don't have any, I don't have a 401k plan, I don't do any of that type of invest. I'd rather, I'd rather put my retirement on my knowledge and my wise investments myself rather than turn it over to some guy and then let him just handle all my money and trust that he's doing the best thing with it. Only so I can uh, get to close to retirement age as so many people did in like 2007, 2008, they were ready to retire soon and, and 40 to 60% of their retirement income just disappeared overnight. Those people have to go back into the workforce and there's no one to give them a, a, a explanation for where their money is. There's no one to help them recoup. That. They'll never recoup that money. They have to work longer in order to recoup that money. And they continue to they go back to work and they keep putting the money back in their 401k. It makes absolutely no sense. There's so many of these guys out here now that have been busted. Or, or and, and, and please know, the point I'm making here is there's so many of them that they're not the exception anymore. you got to be blind as a bat to think that they are the exception. They are the rule. 
This is the behavior that the financial services market uh, 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 it caters to. Or, or it is only a matter of time that you know these types of people are going to come about because they understand the way that the financial services industry operates, and and that the, the way they operate kind of provokes predators, financial predators. You know, it breeds them, so they're going to be there, and yet we continue to turn our money into the to, over to these people to invest on our behalf. So. There's a couple of things. Um, this video will have a couple of installments, at least two installments afterwards, that speak about some of the, the, the new rules of money and the new things that, look, listen, if you don't listen to me, that's fine. But what I think is imperative is that every American go out here and get an education, pick up a book, do something to get yourself an education in money so that you understand money. Uh, uh, if you go to my blog or my Facebook page, you'll find I at least did one post I know on the difference between currency and money, which you need to know. That's fundamental. We need to have a better understanding of the fundamentals of money. That's why so many of us are in the 99% class. Too many of us are in the 99%, a 99% class? Come on. So, it's imperative that you understand what used to be a good thing to do with money and what is not a good thing to do with money. Because as the financial market and the financial industry changes, what used to be a wise investment is no longer a wise investment, you know? Or like for instance, you got so many people pushing precious metals now or commodities in general. Well, that's the cycle we're in. But please don't think that investing in gold and silver is something that's gonna you know, make you rich and last forever. That is going to be an asset class that is going to expand and grow and grow. It's gonna be a great place to be in if you got in at the right time. And then there's gonna be a time to get rid of, uh, if not all, most of that gold and silver and put it in another asset vehicle, okay? Make sense? All right, so what I want to do is take you back a little bit. We're going to go back in history a little bit, and we're going to walk ourselves up to how we got to this point of uh, these 401k plans that are basically there to take advantage of people. There's a, I, I, the post that I did has a, a video of a 60 minutes uh, a 401k piece in which they did a, a few years back just showing the different thing. I mean, they were actually highlighting the different things like the fees and whatnot that are hidden in these 401k and mutual funds, okay? Um, but it was a, a heartbreaking piece. If you haven't seen it, you know, you can Google that or go to YouTube, just type in 60 minutes 401k piece. I'm pretty sure it's still running. But um, so let's go back a little bit and talk about a couple of things that happened in history that led us to where we are, okay? First and foremost, and I hope you guys can see this, we have 1913. And in 1913, that's when the Federal Reserve Bank, Federal Reserve Act was created. Okay. And um, that is a charter. That's a national bank. I, I, I might add that's something that the founding fathers were all against. This centralized money, this non-government. The Federal Reserve Bank is not a government entity. There's nothing government about it. There's nothing federal about it. They don't have any reserves. It is simply the, the, the banking cartel. It's a banking cartel that controls the flow of currency and credit in our nation. So they control our purse strings. It's as simple as that. And, 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 and you'll find different quotes from different people who are in the banking industry. I believe it was uh, uh, Amshaw Rothschild who said, give, give me the power to create a nation's money and I care not who makes its laws. Because understand that once you can create the money, you can control whatever happens in that nation. The, the, the money is key. I don't want to go too deep into that, but I hope you guys can hear what I'm saying, understand what I'm saying. The money is key. They control the purse strings. So as we sit and we argue and debate with one another about what spending should be done on this area and that area, and you know, and politics got you, you know, uh, you know, torn one way or the other, and, and at the end of the day, the Federal Reserve sitting back going, don't y'all know we control all the money? And none of y'all even aware of us. They, there's no check for them. They don't answer to the government, President Obama, or anyone else. So it was a bad idea to start with. I don't know who in the world was that smart. It, well, actually, if you do a history of 1913, you'll find the president was Woodrow Wilson. And he also regretted signing the, the, the charter for the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, he was just an idiot, really. He was a follower. 
Um, he, he, he was led by other people who had different interests and who were funded and backed by this banking cartel. Uh, um, Mandel House, I do believe is his name, and most people in that day and age will say that he was the president. Woodrow Wilson just furthered what he told him. Similar to George Bush and Karl Rove, um, but that's when that happened. 1913, the Federal Reserve Act was passed. So that put someone else in control of our money other than the government powers, all right? Um, now, what their plan was to do was fulfilled in 1971 because in 1913, U.S. dollar was backed by gold. By 1971, Nixon had took the United States off of the gold standard. The currency had been debased to where it was 100% redeemable in gold, 70%, 50%, 75% to the point to where it was backed by nothing. To the point, sorry about the phone, to the point to where it was backed by nothing and that's where we stand today. We have a currency that is backed by absolutely nothing but the, the what is it, the good faith and the credit of the United States of America, something like that. Garbage, okay, the money is backed by nothing. It's virtually worthless, okay? But this was the end game. This was the checkmate when they finally got us to a fiat currency. So the currency is not backed by nothing, which means they can print money out of thin air and expand and continue to debase the currency to no end, or actually until they have expanded and contracted and expanded and contracted and inflated and debased to the, point, to, to the point of zero, which all fiat currencies eventually, in all of history, every fiat currency has returned to its true and original value, which is zero. If you don't know what a fiat currency is, that's a, in concept, basically that's just a, a currency that's backed by nothing of true value. It's not backed by gold, it's not backed by silver, it's not backed by oil, it's not backed by land, it's not backed by houses, there's nothing backing it of value. Okay, and so three short years later, after Nixon took us off of the gold standard, we ended up right here, which is what is pertinent to this video, the 401k and why you may not want to invest in it. This is when the ERISA Act was passed. ERISA, E-R-I-S-A. ERISA stands for Employment, Employer, Employer Retirement Income Security Act. Now, when you hear that, you would think that this act was something that would secure the employee's retirement income. It does the exact opposite. If you do a little bit of research, you'll find that a lot of our legislative acts, they're named the exact opposite of what they're intending to do. This did not secure employee retirement income. What workers had prior to that secured your retirement income better than this, which was a, a, what was called a defined benefits pension plan. That was a defined set amount of money that you knew you would receive for the rest of your life Did you meet, had you met the requirements of retiring from that particular institution with that place of employment. You work there for 25, 30 years, you retire from there, you live for another 30 years, they send you a check, period. Now, with this ERISA Act, which opened up the door for you know mutual funds and 401k plans, all of these retirement plans. What these are are what's called defined contribution plans. Okay, do you get that? Defined benefit move to contribute. Defined contribution. DB became DC. Okay. This is my second. Yeah, okay. So, um, and what that defined contribution means is that now you are responsible for your retirement, not your employer, because you have to put money into this. You have to contribute to your retirement. You're working for them for 30 years is no longer enough for you to receive a pension plan for them, from them. You now have to contribute your own money which is what we do today. You know that 3%, that 5%, that 10% that they take out of your check and put towards your retirement plan? Now, where is that money going now that you have contributed some money to this 401k plan? It's going right back to Wall Street to those same financial predators that I mentioned earlier and a predatory financial system. So basically, in effect, this act gave billions of dollars 
of hardworking Americans' dollars directly to Wall Street banks and firms and salesmen called financial advisors. This is something that you need to know, something that you need to consider before you dump all of your money into a 401k plan. You need to understand who's in control of it. You need to understand the funds, uh, uh, the funds, the management fees, the transaction fees. You need to understand another concept. The person who's managing your fund, they make money whether you're losing money or not. Because they make money on transactional fees. They make money on management fees. They manage your fund and your account whether you lost money or not. How much sense does that make? Shouldn't the person who's in control of earning money on your already earned money for your retirement, shouldn't their money or their income be based upon how much money they earn you? Why should you earn money for losing my money? When you're a, a financial expert, your expertise cost me money but made you money. It makes absolutely no fundamental sense. And I made a video about this, y'all, about the, you know, the way that I think. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a roots thinker. If all of this cloudiness, uh, all of these layers of confusion you know, that gets put above the fundamental core of, of, a, of a particular issue, I can disregard all of that and get right to the core. And if at the core it makes no sense, then you got a problem with me. I have a problem with you. And at the core, to me, it makes no sense for you to earn money for, for losing my money. Well, how, I, how does that work? As a matter of fact, I have to say you're part of the reason why I lost the money because some of the money I lost is going to your pocket and management fees. Transactional fees, the transaction that cost me my money. So it is imperative that you begin to get yourself a financial education. This is why we're in the positions that we are a lot financially as Americans, why there's a 99%. So I'm going to bring you a couple of videos in the near future of the old rules of money versus some of the new things that will help you uh, certainly secure your retirement, uh, save better, invest better. All right. Um, in the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for something to earn you some more money, because the number one, absolute number one principle to a higher financial IQ or a, a greater financial literacy is earn more money. Most of us don't earn enough money. You know, um, $80,000 for a family of four just doesn't cut it anymore in this country. So you have to earn more money. Americans, we have a prime opportunity right here in this day and age right now, while it still lasts, to supplement our incomes, to be entrepreneurs. You may not want to have a, a, a Walmart. You don't want to be the guy. You don't want to be Richard Branson. OK, but what would an extra thousand or two coming into your household do for you and your family? That's not tied to your job, not tied to the possibility of being laid off. It is an additional income stream that is coming into your house that is only dependent upon you. That's what being an entrepreneur is. So to learn more, just stay tuned to uh, the blog and the videos and to figure out how I'm making more money, how I'm supplementing my income and replacing my income. For those of you who want to do that, ultimately, you should click the link below this video that says changelifeuniversity.com. You should check out that video and you can find there yourself uh, a large group of people, small on the grand scheme of things, but enough for a movement. A large group of people who are educating themselves. We're taking education into our own hands and we're taking our destiny into our own hands and we're encouraging and teaching one another on our way to our financial destinies and then some. Click the link below the video. You take a look, give yourself a chance. Stop sitting on the sideline. Wondering why you don't have the life you want. You have to take action. You have to take action. So educate yourself on the things that matter, guys, versus, you know, Kanye and Kim's new baby and, you know, some more garbage that is out there. Housewives of Atlanta. Get yourselves education in things that matter. Click the link below the video and get started earning more money. Till the next time, y'all. Peace. Love. I'll see y'all in the next video.